Hey everyone, welcome back to Reliable Prepper. Today, we're covering one of the most important aspects of home defense and personal safety, reading escape routes and fallback positions in your home. Whether you're dealing with civil unrest, home invasions, natural disasters, or any other emergency situation, having a well thought out escape plan and defensible fallback positions could literally save your life. This isn't just about throwing together a basic plan, it's about understanding your environment, identifying vulnerabilities, and preparing for multiple scenarios so that when things go wrong, you'll be ready. In this video, we're going to cover everything from designing effective escape routes to fortifying areas of your home where you can hunker down if escaping isn't an option. We'll also talk about how to improvise when things don't go according to plan and the vital role that situational awareness plays in your overall survival strategy. If you find this information useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to follow me on Facebook either. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right, let's begin with the question of why escape routes and fallback positions are essential in any emergency preparedness plan. Many people see their home as a fortress, and it should be, but in a crisis, even the safest looking home can quickly become a trap if you don't have an exit strategy in place. The reality is that no matter how well prepared you are, there's always the chance that your home could be breached, compromised by fire, or become otherwise unsafe. Consider a home invasion scenario. Perhaps you've got strong locks on your doors, security cameras, and even an alarm system. But what if the intruders bypass your defenses? Maybe they break in through a window or set fire to your house to flush you out. In these situations, Having multiple escape routes and defensible fallback positions could make all the difference between surviving and becoming a victim. The key here isn't just to have one plan. It's about being adaptable. You need multiple escape routes from every room in your house, particularly the rooms where you and your family spend the most time, such as bedrooms and living rooms. Additionally, you need places within your home where you can retreat, regroup, and defend yourself if leaving is too dangerous. These fallback positions should be well thought out and prepared in advance. This way, if the situation changes rapidly, you'll be ready to respond effectively. Let's begin with your escape routes because when an emergency hits, these are your first line of defense. A good escape plan isn't just about knowing how to get out of your house. It's about ensuring you have multiple ways out in case your primary route is blocked or becomes inaccessible. Emergencies are unpredictable and relying on just one exit could be a fatal mistake if that route becomes compromised. Start by grabbing a blueprint of your home, or if you don't have one handy, sketch out a rough layout. Identify every door, window, hallway, and staircase, and pay close attention to the rooms where your family spends the most time, like the living room and bedrooms. Your goal is simple, create at least two escape routes from every room. That way, no matter what happens, you always have a backup plan. This includes thinking about the path of least resistance and how quickly you can move through it without stumbling upon obstacles. Your primary escape route should always be the fastest and safest way out of the house. For most people, that's going to be through the front or back door. But what if that door is blocked, whether by fire or intruders? That's where your secondary escape route comes in. This could be a side door, a window, or even an emergency ladder from an upper floor window. Think beyond the obvious exits garage doors, basement access points, or even large dog doors might serve as unconventional escape routes in a pinch. For those of you in multi-story homes, investing in emergency ladders for the upstairs windows is crucial. These ladders can be literal lifesavers if the stairs are blocked or if the fire is spreading upward. Keep those ladders easily accessible, right near the windows they're intended for, and make sure they're sturdy enough to support the weight of your family. It's not enough to just have the ladders, everyone in the household, should know how to deploy them quickly and safely. Practicing using them in a calm environment will prepare everyone for the stress of a real emergency. Windows as escape routes are often overlooked but can be lifesavers in a crisis. Windows give you a quick way out, especially if your main exits are blocked. Make sure all the windows in your home can be opened easily and check that the area outside is free of obstructions like bushes, fences, or anything else that could slow you down or cause injury during a hasty exit. If you have security bars on your windows, ensure they have quick release mechanisms that you can access easily from the inside, because in an emergency, every second matters. Practice unlocking and opening these windows regularly to make sure everything functions smoothly. Consider the interior of your home as well. 
Clutter can easily turn into a serious obstacle during an emergency. Hallways filled with furniture, shoes by the door, or even kids' toys scattered on the floor can become hazards when you need to move quickly. Keep all pathways leading to your escape routes clear and easy to navigate at all times. You might need to rearrange furniture, create more open spaces, or designate specific spots for shoes, backpacks, and other everyday items so they don't pile up near the doors or in hallways. Additionally, think about lighting. In the event of a power outage or during nighttime, it's essential that you have backup lighting options like flashlights or emergency lights placed strategically along your escape routes. Familiarize yourself with how your home looks and feels in the dark, and practice moving through it without relying on normal lighting. The ability to navigate in low visibility conditions is crucial to ensuring a smooth escape. Now let's talk about fallback positions. There are situations where escaping simply isn't an option. Maybe the attackers have surrounded your home, or there's chaos in the streets due to civil unrest, and leaving could put you in even more danger. In these scenarios, having a well-prepared fallback position becomes essential. An area in your home where you can hunker down and defend yourself until the threat subsides, or it becomes safe to escape. A fallback position needs to offer both concealment and protection. You want to remain hidden from view, but also be protected by something that can stop bullets, or at least slow down an attacker. Ideal fallback positions could include basements, interior hallways, closets, or even reinforced bathrooms. These areas are typically harder for intruders to access and offer you valuable time to think, regroup, and plan your next move without being immediately vulnerable. When choosing your fallback position, you should evaluate how defensible it is. Does it have a solid door that can be securely barricaded? Are the walls thick enough or reinforced with something that can offer protection from gunfire? What obstacles are in place that could slow down or deter an intruder? Additionally, the position should give you access to defensive tools, whether that's firearms, non-lethal weapons like pepper spray, or even blunt objects that can be used in self-defense. The goal is to give yourself the upper hand in a worst case scenario. Once you've identified your fallback positions, the next step is fortifying them. Reinforce doors with metal bars, crossbars, or even sturdy wooden braces to make them harder to breach. If your fallback position has windows, it's worth considering an upgrade to shatterproof glass or the installation of polycarbonate panels. These materials are much tougher than regular glass and can buy you precious time if someone is trying to break in. Even if you don't have shatterproof glass, Layering furniture or other heavy objects in front of windows can add an extra layer of protection. You also need to stock these areas with essential supplies. Make sure you have enough water, food, medical kits, and extra clothes to last several days in case you're forced to stay there for an extended period. Power and lighting are crucial as well. Battery-operated lanterns, flashlights, and even a small generator can keep you functional if the power goes out. Don't overlook communication tools either. Have a charged phone a reliable radio or walkie-talkies on hand to stay informed about what's happening outside or to call for help if needed. Remember, a fallback position isn't just about physical defense, it's also about staying calm and composed mentally. In high-stress situations, mental toughness is key. You'll need to keep a cool head, stay focused on your objectives, and be patient. Whether you're waiting for the right moment to make your next move or simply holding out until the danger passes, maintaining your mental composure is just as important as having the right tools and supplies at your disposal. Keeping yourself busy, whether it's monitoring your surroundings or even having distractions like a book or small activities, can help you stay calm and ready for action. No matter how well you plan, there's always a chance that things won't go as expected. Maybe you can't get to your fallback position or your primary escape route is blocked. This is where improvisation comes into play. Being resourceful and using whatever you have on hand can sometimes mean the difference between life and death. Let's say you're trapped in a room with no weapons and no immediate way out. Look around. What can be turned into a makeshift defense tool? A heavy chair can be used to block a door or as a blunt object to defend yourself. Thick blankets can be used to cover broken glass, allowing you to escape through a window without cutting yourself. A fire extinguisher, in addition to putting out fires, can also be used as a weapon or a distraction. If your fallback position doesn't have reinforced windows and an intruder is trying to break in through one, you can use whatever heavy objects are nearby to barricade the window further. Stack furniture like bookshelves or tables against the window to slow down the attacker. 
and if you're running low on supplies or need to improvise, don't overlook items you wouldn't normally consider, like water from a toilet tank, not the bowl, which can be filtered for drinking in an emergency. Improvisation also extends to creating distractions. Let's say you need to buy yourself a few extra moments to escape or reposition. Things like setting off a car alarm, turning on loud appliances, or throwing objects to create noise in different areas of the house can confuse and mislead an intruder. It's about using your environment to your advantage in creative and unexpected ways. When you find yourself under extreme pressure, your ability to think clearly and improvise is crucial. For example, if the intruders start setting fire to the home and your original escape plan is compromised, you need to quickly assess your environment and adapt. Is there a window that can be broken safely? Can you move to another floor and exit through a roof or an attic window? Even something like using sheets or curtains as a makeshift rope to lower yourself from a second floor window can be a life-saving decision when other options have been cut off. Improvisation isn't just about physical tools. It's also about thinking tactically. In moments of high stress, slow down your thought process, take stock of your surroundings, and find creative solutions. Practice these scenarios mentally before they happen, so that when the time comes, you're mentally prepared to act swiftly and confidently. No matter how well you've prepared your home, none of that preparation will matter if you're not paying attention to your surroundings. Situational awareness is often overlooked, but it's one of the most critical survival skills you can develop. Being aware of your surroundings doesn't mean living in a constant state of paranoia. It's about staying mindful and prepared. For instance, did you hear an unusual noise outside? Is there a strange car parked in front of your house that you haven't seen before? Maybe you've noticed that a window or door has been tampered with. These are the subtle cues you need to pick up on. It starts with small, daily habits. Whenever you walk into a room, make it a point to identify potential exits. Think about where you would go if you needed to get out quickly. If you're at home, get into the routine of noticing who's coming and going in your neighborhood. Is there a delivery van that seems a little out of place? Have you noticed anything different in your environment recently? These observations could be critical. Now, building up your situational awareness takes practice, but the good news is it's a skill you can develop over time. Start by practicing mindfulness in your daily life. When you're out and about, make it a habit to observe what's happening around you. Who's nearby? What are they doing? Where are the potential exits if something goes wrong? At home, get your family involved in the practice as well. Everyone should understand the importance of staying alert and aware, especially during high-stress situations. Whether it's having someone check the windows periodically or monitoring your security cameras, there should always be someone keeping watch during a crisis. By staying aware and practicing these habits, you'll be ready to react quickly when things change. Having a plan is crucial, but keeping that plan up to date is equally important. As your home evolves and potential threats change, your escape routes and fallback positions need to evolve with them. Regular practice is key to making sure your plan works in a real emergency. Running drills with your family ensures that everyone knows exactly what to do when the time comes. You'll want to practice a variety of scenarios, whether it's a home invasion, a fire, or civil unrest. Mix it up by practicing at different times of day, so everyone is comfortable with the plan, no matter when the crisis occurs whether it's broad daylight or the middle of the night. During these drills, don't just rely on your primary escape route. Make sure everyone is familiar with the backup routes and practices moving quickly and quietly under pressure. Add a little stress to the scenario. Time how long it takes to evacuate or simulate a blocked route, forcing everyone to adapt. The goal is to ensure that everyone can stay calm and react efficiently, no matter what happens. It's also important to check your equipment regularly. Make sure emergency ladders, flashlights, radios, and other tools are in good working order. Replace batteries frequently and ensure fire extinguishers are charged and ready to go. If you plan to use firearms for defense, keep them maintained and practice regularly to ensure you can handle them confidently in high pressure situations. As your home changes, whether through remodeling new furniture or added security features, you'll need to reassess your escape routes and fallback positions. A new piece of furniture might block a key exit, or a new lock might slow down your response. These seemingly small changes can impact your entire plan, so make it a habit to review and adjust everything every few months. Let's start to wrap up by discussing some critical considerations 
for those rare but serious situations where you may find yourself hunkering down in your fallback position for an extended period. If you anticipate being in your fallback spot for more than just a few hours, you need to ensure it's stocked with the right supplies to sustain you and your family for several days, possibly longer. This means having enough food and water to last at least 72 hours, but ideally more. Think about the shelf-stable foods that don't require cooking or minimal preparation. And make sure you have enough water. About a gallon per person per day is recommended. Don't forget to include utensils, portable stoves, or water purification methods as well, in case you need to make the most of your available resources. Medical supplies are just as critical. A basic first aid kit won't cut it in a prolonged situation. You need to have trauma supplies, over-the-counter medications for pain, fever, allergies, and digestive issues, as well as any necessary prescription medications your family requires. Make sure you have extra doses on hand, stored securely in your fallback position. If someone in your household has specific medical needs, such as inhalers or insulin, make sure these are part of your prep. It's always better to be over-prepared than caught without something essential. If home defense is a primary concern, you should seriously consider adding ballistic protection to your fallback position. This might include installing ballistic panels inside the walls to protect against incoming fire or strategically stacking sandbags to act as barriers. You can also reinforce doors with metal or wood crossbars and even pile heavy furniture in front of windows and entry points. These fortifications won't make your position impenetrable, but they'll slow down attackers and buy you valuable time to react or reposition yourself. Let's not forget firearms, because if you've prepared for self-defense, you'll want to make sure your fallback position is equipped with more than just cover. Keep your firearms securely stored, but easily accessible in the event you need them. Ideally, they should be locked up in a quick access safe or hidden compartment that only you and trusted members of your household know how to use. You'll also need to stockpile extra ammunition and magazines. These should be stored in a dry, easily reachable location so that you can reload quickly if necessary. Training is just as important as having the firearms themselves. Make sure you and anyone else who may need to use a firearm is trained in safe handling, proper shooting techniques, and how to reload efficiently under stress. It's one thing to have a weapon, but it's another to be able to use it effectively in a high pressure situation. Regular practice at the range can ensure that you're prepared to defend your position if it ever comes to that. Finally, consider your communication options. In the event that your fallback position is compromised or you need to call for help, having a way to reach the outside world is vital. This could be a charged cell phone, a two-way radio, or even a ham radio if phone lines are down. Keeping these communication devices charged and ready to go can provide a lifeline in dire situations, allowing you to alert authorities or signal for assistance if things go wrong. At the end of the day, preparation and forethought are key. Whether it's stocking up on supplies, fortifying your position, or ensuring that you have the tools to defend yourself, every step you take now increases your chances of staying safe during those high-risk moments. Planning ahead and keeping calm under pressure can make all the difference when your safety is on the line. That brings us to the end of today's video on creating escape routes and fallback positions in your home. The most important thing to remember is that preparation is everything. Having multiple escape routes gives you options when the unexpected happens, and knowing your fallback positions ensures that you have a safe, defensible place if leaving isn't possible. Improvisation is key. No plan is perfect, and being able to adapt to changing situations is vital. The same goes for situational awareness. Staying alert to what's happening around you will give you the edge in any crisis, helping you act quickly and decisively. Take the time now to plan, prepare, and practice so when it matters most, you're ready to protect yourself and your loved ones. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe to Reliable Prepper and give us a thumbs up. Follow us on Facebook for daily tips and updates. Stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you in the next video.